Hello and welcome to New Junction. You join me today at the start of a new series I'm dubbing Diorama Diaries. This all came about because last Christmas I was treated to this diorama, which was made by my sister-in-law, which is a model of her stables. Now being in my loft, um, and made of card, it's not lasting particularly well. Um, so I thought, what better way to save it than to uh, remake it. So this series is going to be using new techniques I've never used before and doing some research and pushing myself to see how realistic I can make this diorama become. As part of the new scenic season on the layout, the building of this new diorama will fill the Wednesday slot along with certain days out etc. So where are we going to start? The first things first and the uh, real stables the main stable here is actually on a concrete base. So that's what today's video is going to feature. The building of that concrete base. So the first step when building any diorama is to put it on something solid. As you can see this is on cardboard so for longevity reasons um, it's not really any good. It's coming up to what is 10 months old now um, and it's just really warped and gone. So I've got myself this uh, rectangle of plywood, it's 5 mil thick, and that's what's going to be our new base. So as you can see, I've previously marked out the rectangle where the stables will go, um, and it's just slightly bigger. That's going to form the new uh, concrete base. I've gone round that with some trimmed down coffee stirrers, um, which I've got from a local fast food outlet. Um, these have been PVA glued down last night, and are now solid and ready to be uh, filled in. So I've got myself some polyfiller from Wix. What I'm not going to do is add it straight to the rectangle. I'm actually going to add it to this bowl and mix a touch of water in just so it becomes a bit more pliable. And then with one of the coffee stirrers which I've uh, obtained, I'm going to stir that in and then pour the whole uh, slightly uh, liquidy mix into that rectangle. Now as you saw, that was uh, probably half of the uh, polyfiller box and literally just a sprinkling of water. Now I've mixed this and it's just on the sloppy side but it's uh, definitely thick, thick cake mix that. Very pliable but then uh, still quite firm. So what we're going to do is lightly spoon in the, uh, the mix. Hopefully it's enough to fill the uh, the rectangle. As that's in, what I'm going to do is just take one of these uh, coffee stirrers and start to uh, push it out. Again, it doesn't matter if there's too much or if there's any overspill, all adds to the detail. And again, as we know, I like messy modelling. And you can't get any messier than the <laughs> polyfiller and water. Just don't worry too much about rough edges at this stage because they, uh, they'll all be sanded down. You can see that was far too much. Polyfiller. So it's enough to settle into the box so that when it dries it 
forms a nice even square. There we go. As you can see that's gone everywhere, but uh, that's how it's meant to be. Of course, come tomorrow when it's dry, I'll take away the uh, coffee stirrer edges and that should leave a uh, nice rectangle which we can then sand down before painting. As you'll have seen, I have stirred in the uh, water and polyfiller so that does sort of uh, stir in some bubbles. Um, I am now going to uh, tap this piece of plywood, the overall diorama base, on the, uh, on the floor. So I'm going to just tap it on the, uh, the desk I'm on here just to get rid of some of the bubbles. I don't want to get rid of all of them because I do want some uh, uh, bubbles left in it to add a bit of detail to the concrete. Um, this is only because the uh, concrete I'm modelling is slightly worn and I want some uh, holes and divots and I want it to look a bit random. It doesn't need to look perfect for me in this stage so depending on uh, I suppose the concrete you're modelling depends on how uh, efficiently you try and get the bubbles out but I will try and get the bulk out. It also helps to uh, settle the polyfiller into the corners. Right, join me tomorrow when it's dry. While that's drying, one top tip I was given is uh, generally it's hard to estimate how much of the polyfiller mix you'll need. Um, and rather than let it go to waste, you can literally cover this bowl with cling film um, and uh, store it for next time. If it dries out any, just add a bit more water. Easy. So here we are. We're a total of three days ahead. The polyfiller itself didn't want to dry at all, so it spent all day today in the uh, airing cupboard and it's just about getting there. I've taken the edges off, <clears throat> as you can see, and it has chipped away at some of it. So if it was meant to be a perfect uh, slab of concrete, all you'd do is uh, stick them back down again and refill the holes with more polyfiller. But uh, as this is just a bit of a test bed, it's not so important. The next job for me is just to sand the top down. I'm going to use a uh, detailer, a wooden detailer. You can literally use a bit of sandpaper uh, and a block, but uh, I want to be nice and quick. So that's the next job. That now sanded. The next job is to paint it. I'm just literally using uh, the first grey I've got, which is this uh, Rail Match Rail Grey. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this stage because we'll be uh, using washes later to darken it down. Uh, once that first coat is uh, dry, we're then going to coat it in uh, some matte coat varnish. This will seal the uh, plaster. Um, and then allow us to uh, mess around with some washes. So let's get on with that. So there we are all painted and glossed. The next stage is to go over it with the various washes just to bring out any of the details. So in order, I'm going to go over it with a uh, black wash first just to bring out any of the uh, lumps and bumps. Um, then I'm going to, with a sort of patchy technique, go over it with a sand wash and a bit of dust wash. And then ultimately the top coat will be uh, a light coating of dark grey wash. And uh, this should leave uh, a nice effect on the concrete. Now the uh, first wash has been applied, uh, hopefully that's all soaking into the details now. What I'm just doing off camera 
just folding up a sheet of kitchen towel, which I'm going to dab into my uh, enamel thin thinners. Ooh, I only want a little bit. It smells amazing, by the way. And I'm just going to rub over the top very lightly, which will hopefully lift off some of the uh, paint while not getting in the crevices. As you can see, it's just turning it back down again. What that's revealing, of course, oh, need a bit more, is a lovely concrete coloured slab of uh, polyfiller. You can see it's all on the uh, kitchen towel, and then if I uh, take you in for a closer look, you can see how uh, good that's looking now. Looks like a real piece of concrete. So you could leave it just like that, to be honest, because that looks quite nice. But what I'm going to do is, as this is a uh, journey of discovery, uh, I'm going to have a play with the other washes and just see what effects we can do, and then um, um, again, once again, thin it down and uh, see what we're left with. So here goes. So as you can see, I've been having a play. I've been using uh, those colours I mentioned earlier, and each time I've been um, wiping them down with enamel thinners. Um, and I think now I've I've reached a point where I'm happy with the uh, the, the rainbow effect of colours on this slab of concrete. Now it does look a bit uh, overused, but then uh, this uh, slab of concrete is meant to be. It's not meant to be uh, pristine by any means. Um, you could have quite easily just stopped at the uh, just the black wash rubbed down. And I think if I was doing a depot or something like that, I probably would have. But in reality, uh, this in front of me, it, I think it looks more colourful on camera than it does in reality. It's very grey in the uh, in the flesh. Um, but you see, if I put the uh, field shelter back up and then lower you down to ground level, you can see it's made a very nice um, base sheet of concrete, and it looks very realistic. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm uh, going to work on episode 2. As ever guys, thanks for watching. I hope it's been of interest to someone. As I said at the beginning, it's a bit of a, uh, a project just to sort of build my own skills, but I thought I'd bring you along with me. Um, and uh, it's not been the most train related thing ever, but I'll leave you with a clip of my banana train. But uh, <laughs> thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys. Bye.